welcome back to Richardson Studios. My name is Michael Wickerson, and I've taken a two-week break from making videos so I could hone and develop my um, grasshopper skills as they're uh, tied to robotics. I've taken a workshop off at the American University in Cairo, uh, finishing that with the deliverables. The script you see here on the right is the deliverable, and I've actually brought in a bit of a, uh, a loop to the to the video documentation of what's happening here. And what it is is it's seven axes, uh, axes of uh, script that has a parametric model that can be generated with the WAM, which is welding as, uh, arc assisted manufacturing. And even though the seventh axis is really just pivoting and resetting to a 45, 50 degrees, I thought I'd just get that into the script so I could take it to the full seven axis. Extremely happy with my skill sets. And what I'm going to do is slowly start teaching this uh, without uh, intruding on the intellectual property that I had and gained from Omar and Ahmed, who put together the. Uh, actual fabrication workshop and are working on scripting this right now and I'm very thankful to them. Uh, but uh, if you can see, I'll just put it in a nutshell as to what's happening. What I have here is a script that if I chose to run it, uh, it does run. It runs through every iteration. I'll start at the beginning and you can see as I take that through, it will run and there's some really nice subtleties here that it's running one direction back in the other direction. And I've optimized the robot to do very minimal movement because the rest of it can be taken care of by the positioner uh, instead of the robot moving. So that's kind of a nice little articulation. I'll leave it there. And I've actually have some nice colors and some interesting things that I've done to the color tones as I, as I roll through here. If I had it on to uh, something different, like say a shaded, you can see that I've gone through the color scheme uh, as it changes. Uh, each one kind of plays off of one another. So a fun little display of what's happening. And I've taken this, and there's a nice little script here that I'll be working from to the model that's available. There's a full room that's... Uh, totally around the piece if you want to get into it and see how it's experienced. But I will be taking the robot setup. Well, actually, I'll leave it on, but take the robot off so we can see it parametrically. And we'll put on our first little script here to see what's going on. Uh, I'll open my grasshopper, and I'll break this into how I'm starting to understand the script. So let's just start from the beginning uh, back here at zero. And what we have is a model. And I think what's important to start with as we look into this data uh, I've got everything, it's a pretty readable script, one of my most readable scripts. So it's a WAM workshop at AUC, 7-axis robotic control, parametric model was done at Wickerson Studio, it was part of this project. So the parametric model itself is a set of curves that ends up getting, uh, uh, well, it gets fully formed, uh, and then it gets run through a process of making planes. What I'm going to do is just take this off here and take this to, hang on, I'll just uh, disable this. So we don't get into too much. And you'll see that what I have here, I think, is my parametric model, uh, something that I can play with. And I'll just get through the sliders. I'm not going to teach you basic grasshopper, but it's from one curve. You don't have to import anything from the 3DM file. It just comes in as a base curve. I think that's off of the base curve. It just stems from a point that I brought in. And as I change this positioner uh, over here, I can change the scale of that, uh, which is nice to change the form that you're actually playing off of. I think what I'll do for interest is uh, what's most interesting is actually to take this through. Actually, let me uh, go over here and take these off. That's the one that I want to work. I want that one actually on. I think what I'll do is, well, I'm just going to have to cut everything else in the script. Uh, let me just block off this section for now and take this to disable. And then I'll put everything enabled on here. So I can run through here, enable, and what you'll end up seeing is the actual really nice uh, curves that are non-planar curves that are happening here. These actually aren't planar curves, which is an effect of having some really good effects with the WAM uh, welding to make a thicker bead or a thinner bead. So as I roll this through, I think I'll set this one back on uh, one quarter, which is where it was. Um, and then I've got the side multiplier that can make this fairly interesting uh, in all different arrays. It'll smooth out as we go higher one direction it can elongate and fold uh, but basically an interesting parametric model that works with the script I can pull down the cosine if I wanted or bring it up and this is pretty simple uh, fabrication techniques of starting with a point making yourself a, a stretched out helix that's jittered in its shape uh, I think what I have here if we take a look as I click on it you should be able to see yeah the lines basically uh, building a point system that I can throw off in one direction play with that curve, throw it through a rotation, uh, contour that, and then process through. I've done a little bit of weird rotations to affect the twists on this. I didn't want it to be just a boring shape. 
uh, I did jitter that in a couple of directions so that it allowed for a kind of cool shape that could be processed right through the user. Um, so a lot of little effects can happen. So I think I've got sliders that so skew the start line uh, direction, uh, direction line, uh, contour distance will change up the shapes quite a bit if you start altering that. I think you could probably run it if the hole strips off and it moves fairly quickly. Let's see how that has an effect. Even though I like 0.3, I like the height. I think I have a 300 millimeter height limit on this for the robotic arm. And uh, then I've got the evaluate curve parameter, which you can change as well. Axis rotation, contour axis. But that's the basic grasshopper I usually teach online for people to start. What's very cool here is you end up getting into this tool, uh, which is nice that can play off of uh, the minimum and maximum of what is actually physical necessary for doing uh, robotic control with an ABB uh, uh, robot. Um, and then the MIG wire is what we're actually doing the gas welding arc, uh, gas uh, uh, welding, uh, gas metal arc welding to this here. MIG welder, which is actually 70 miles of field probably at a 0 0.035 or 0 0.045 millimeter wire. Uh, I would like to go on the silk and bronze wire and actually turn a bronze piece in, which would be amazing. Uh, let's go here and see what happens after that. I would have a generating target planes as I continue. Uh, I take this one to enable. Uh, you're going to end up setting up not just points, uh, create your points to begin with, and after your points happen, you're going to generate the, the, the planes on those and have a nice little height check that's in here as well. So I'll enable that, and you'll see you end up getting to the fact that you have to deal with planes and quite a bit of information that's tucked in here, which I think is really fantastic, because the robot will follow those planes and it will start to happen. Now the optimization is a very cool tool. If I put it on, and maybe you can visualize what's happening here, uh, you're literally dealing with uh, uh, planes that have to come around and be dispatched on each side of this line to cut it, because in the end, you're going to be pulling those lines off to one uh, source, and I don't have anything visual that'll come up on here except for this planer slap down to the bottom, dispatching that between a line. I think the line's in here, or it was in there. I might have generated it earlier, and then it puts it to one side or the other. I like this toggle tool, which is amazing. It's really to orient your robotic arm. You've got a few toggles on and off that are all uh, false, false, and true is working right now, and also an angle because you don't want any collisions. And then I really wanted to get the uh, everything moved so the model, this is what I came up with, which wasn't in the workshop, which I'm very excited to say, is I managed to uh, put the planes that were here, uh, managed to move those after I flattened all those planes away from the object themselves, uh, which you had all these other planes. Let me see where they are. Oh, where'd y'all go? Uh, the lines, the vectors. So oh, got to get back to the form all the way back to the object. There they all are flattened on the bottom. I managed to put all those planes up on this one line, but then I can orient it. So when I get into the seven axis, I can actually have some fun with it. This doesn't make a lot of sense, but I am going to break this down. The visualization checks visuals on each point, uh, which is kind of cool to see where they are. You can see where they're all being tucked right there for now. And then the robotic targets are very cool. Uh, you, you bring these in as kind of an entwine, but I'm entwining another thing that's been nested in through a insert items. So you've got your safety positions, you've got your external accesses on your positioner, you got your torch head tip of what it's doing, and you'll see what's tucked in here is a nice little script that I think here which is a repeat script that has to be repeated earlier on if it's going to work as well. And then you've got your start and finish position to where it is. So in the end, you're left with this very cool uh, running robot that says, oh, that's what I have to do and I have to move. Then you've got your timer to slide it through a zero to one parameter, which is great for color changes and visualization. And you also have the ability to go in and pick any robot you want from around the world. And if you have to download new ones or invent your new one from planes, you can. You don't have to use a five to six access to robot. You can invent a, you know, like an infinite or as many robotic crazy arm contraptions you want to make. They're really just lines connected by points, which are turned into planes and a, a way to make a contraption. Because just because robotic arms are popular doesn't mean you have to make a robotic arm. You can make anything. Uh, so that can be very fun, even though it could be interesting because you need that device actually made in the world. Uh, there's some uh, orientation of the tooltip, and the tooltip's a nice little unit that they've made for you. But you can put anything on the end of this. You can put a human hand on the end, a bone, whatever you want, and then they do name it. Uh, and these, even though it looks like they're disconnected, uh, I did find the workshop used hidden wires nicely, and it makes your script a lot more organized. The visualization I had fun with, one being uh, the visualization of the paths. Uh, so you've got to go back onto here, and you'll see the visualization, I think, if I leave that on. Yeah, it's those lines as those jitter and do all the rotation. That's kind of fun to watch that thing move, which is your model reacting to the robotic arm. And then I put on some color tones, which I thought was nice. 
which can be experienced in uh, render or actually I think it's experienced in shaded. But I need my uh, I need this off, and you'll see how the colors as I slide through go from green to uh, one's going backwards, one's going forward. I just want the first uh, parameter. I minus one minus the parameter setting. So I'll go through that as well. And then you got this really cool line here that as you take it through the robot arm actually visualizes for you uh, the toolpath. And these are all, so you can see where it's going. And because it's been optimized, the toolpath for the robot actually isn't that complicated. It's not like running it all around the disk. It's the positioner's doing a lot of that for you. I guess you could set a tool line to the positioner if you want to get your form as well. Another thing that they can visualize. I know this is a lot. And then you've got this device, which I really like, because this is your robot. And that's it. That's your robot. And uh, I think that's pretty cool to simplify a robot to exactly that. And you can see how that, that's not too hard to think of as a geometry. I'm sure it's got the fancy mesh on it that everybody's make, but one, two, three, four. Uh, not too hard thinking of some pivots in there and get your five axis robot or more. Uh, what I have here is another visualization of the tooltip as to where that's running and also, in a sense, of uh, bringing that on and making preview on. You can start to see that that should be, uh, I think it should be red, yellow, blue. Yeah, so you can start to coordinate this. Visualization, you'll see that's very familiar to something earlier on in the script right here with this visualization of where those planes have to go. And then the best thing about this whole workshop was you not only end up with the uh, the code or the data for the code, but an actual uh, node that will format or put the syntax in correctly, but you end up with 2,266 codes that you could put right into this robot and it would run, assuming you don't have any collisions. I'm a little nervous of this orange here. It tells me this is probably a hose collision or something or a tooltip bouncing. But if it's running at least in that condition, it should be fine. All you got to do is pop onto this. And I think we're in business. There we go. He's got some awesomeness. And throw it through a little animation. Uh, set it to that screen. And let's do a little 120 animation, which isn't going to take long. It's going to move pretty fast. And you're not going to really catch it. But I've made better videos with this. And what's nice is while I'm doing that, I've already uh, picked some choice angles that I really like to get to and pop around. Uh, which is kind of nice and even the top view if you can. Uh, so I'm having fun with this, to say the least. I hope to teach it on my Patreon for those interested. And it's always nice to have played so much with Grasshopper that in the end, uh, you've got a script that you can go into. You can make different patterns. The one thing that I'm really going to explore creatively is making things that aren't a robot arm. Uh, there's no reason for me not to think that at the end of something, this circular positioner that we're looking at isn't a wheel for a structure. So the types of machines and tools you can start to create, you can see why I'm interested because I started my career in the arts making tools and simple machines, lifting and pulling, uh, useless, uh, <laughs> what do I call them, useless machines, all these crazy things. And uh, I think it's wonderful to have this ability to think this way in my older years and, uh, and wrap my mind around it. it. It really feels good when you get these things up and running and you can start to provide your own fantastic magic. Michael Wickerson, Wickerson Studios, ever forward. Uh, we're all working on the same human project, sometimes undoing one another's business, but let's just uh, see where we're going. Thank you.